All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna rewrite x to the power of six minus one equals zero as x to the power of three to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of three plus one times x to the power of three minus one is equal to zero. Now, for x to the power of three minus one equals zero, I can, I'm can i gonna rewrite this as x to the power of three minus one to the power of three equals zero, so I can use the property a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, this turns into x minus one times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero and x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So for x minus one equals zero, all I have to do is add one on both sides and I get x is equal to one. And for x squared plus x plus one equals zero, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative one plus or minus the square root of three i over two. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of three plus one is equal to zero. And I'm gonna subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to negative one meaning x is also equal to negative one. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of six plus one equals zero, I'm gonna again subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of six is equal to negative one. And if I take the sixth root, I get x is equal to six root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one over six. So now, the sixth root of negative one is, say the, we know that I is equal to the square root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one half. So negative one to the power of one over six is the same thing as negative one to the power of one half minus something. So now one over six, or I should say one half minus one over six is equal to one over three. So one over six plus one over three is equal to one half. We know this, meaning we have negative one to the power of one over six And this plus, or sorry, I should, one over two minus one over three is what we can rewrite one over six as. Now, this is the same thing as one half plus negative one over three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, 
this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution. All right, so for this video, I'm going to be solving the equation 8 to the power of x plus 9 is equal to 9 to the power of x plus 8. So I'm going to be solving for x in this equation, as that is the only variable. And now for my solution. I'm going to start by rewriting my equation down here so I have more solving space. So my equation is 8 to the power of x plus 9 is equal to 9 to the power of x plus 8. Now from here, I'm going to be using the property of exponents that states that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have 8 to the power of x plus 9. And I can rewrite this as 8 to the power of x times 8 to the power of 9. And this is equal to 9 to the power of x plus 8, which I can also rewrite as 9 to the power of x times 9 to the power of 8. Now from here, I'm going to divide both sides by 9 to the power of x. So then for my right hand side, these two cancel out and I get 8 to the power of x times 8 to the power of 9 over 9 to the power of x is equal to 9 to the power of 8. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 8 to the power of 9. So then these two cancel out and I get 8 to the power of x over 9 to the power of x is equal to 9 to the power of 8 over 8 to the power of 9. Now from here, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log of 8 to the power of x over 9 to the power of x is equal to log of 9 to the power of 8 over 8 to the power of 9. Now, if I have something in the form log a over b, this is equal to log a minus log b. So log a to the power of x over 9 to the power of x is going to equal log of a to the power of x minus log of 9 to the power of x. And I can use the same property of log 9 to the power of 8 over 8 to the power of 9 to make it equal to log 9 to the power of 8 minus log 8 to the power of 9. Now, another property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is the same thing as b times log a. In this case, I can use this property for all my terms over here. So to start log a to the power of x, I can move this to the front, and I get x times log a. Now I have this minus log 9 to the power of x, I can move x to the front, so I get x times log 9. And this is equal to log 9 to the power of 8. I can move 8 to the front, so I get 8 times log 9 minus log 8 to the power of 9. I can move 9 to the front, so I get 9 times log 8. Now, because both of these terms have x in them, I can simply factor out x. So I get x times log 8 
minus log 9 is equal to 8 times log 9 minus 9 times log 8. Now, we obviously want to find the value of x, and the only way to do that is to get rid of this log 8 minus log 9 by dividing both sides by log 8 minus log 9. So then these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 8 times log 9 minus 9 times log 8 over log 8 minus log 9. Now, log of 9, we can simplify this to log of 3 squared. And remember, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move b to the front. So I can move 2 to the front, and this is going to equal 2 times log 3. Now I can do the same thing for log 8. Log 8 is equal to log of 2 to the power of 3. And I can move 3 to the front. So I get this equal to 3 times log 2. So now from here, I get x is equal to 8 times 2 log 3 minus 9 times 3 log 2. And I have this all over 3 log 2 minus 2 log 3. Now 8 times 2 is 16, so I get x equals 16 times log 3 minus 27 times log 2 over 3 log 2 minus 2 log 3. And all of this is equal to 9.6548.